Actually, man, um, it's, it's complete silence. You know, um, because um, our, our first concern is tour. You know, um, at the end of the day, man, um, you know, football, you know, it's, it's a game. But, you know, we're human beings, you know, outside of this game. And we all have feelings. So um, in that moment, I think you saw how everyone felt about Tua. Uh, he's, you know, the captain on his team and the leader. And um, guys have so much respect for him. So, you know, the, the silence, man, was, you know, just guys showing their concern. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I am Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry and Jake Croucher. Fellas, we have a lot to get through today, but no better place to start than Thursday Night Football, where, got to be honest, we have to start with Are you sure? the best for Tua. Are you sure that's where you want to start? It's absolutely. I mean, we're at a massive table. <laughs> We're at like a, we're at like a, like the biggest table of all time. I wanted time. to see how long we can go without addressing it. No. You didn't allow it at all. I, I mean, I'm like I got here. Like we we were on this small little table. We and were basically all making out with three people. We're like, we need a bigger table. Yes. And they were like, all right, f you, Barry. We're gonna get you a big table. We're gonna we're gonna put it in the entire like. Like we had to build a whole nother wing. The ends the, are out of the shot. Right, right out of the now. shot. Yeah, I mean, like you can't even see. We still have the pinball machine. You just you can't even see it here. All the like, let's paint this red, and suddenly, you know, we're like Jada Pinkett Smith. So you love I mean, it? Like, I'm, what? So you obviously love it. <laughs> Jay, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, just I just say. think uh, I've you know I ruined the sixth sense of Fight Club yesterday, and now we get this ship. Yeah, uh, I'm doing exactly. Sense of the ship. Yeah, yeah well, 100. I just just enjoy this table today. It's all I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. say, boys. I feel like by the end of the show, we'll be buried all the way behind it. It's just going to be you two again as a normal. I mean, it's just. I mean, it is. It's a little like, hi. Are you screaming at each other? We're not. I mean, it is a little bit. It is a little bit like um, some of those joke tables that you see like in movies where you're just like, it's two people at the very end of each, you know, super long table. And there's two people at the very end. I'm trying to think of like, now that, where's the movie that you've seen (laughs) that scene? I'll think about it. What and spoiler I'll you spoil got for us today? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you how yeah. that's saying it. I feel like I feel like there's a scene like that in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, but I could be wrong on that one. Okay. I could be wrong on that one. We got. Maybe we do a whole podcast on Dirty Rotten Scoundrels because there's nothing but twists in that movie, and <laughs> yeah. you can just spoil like 18 different things in that particular movie. Jay Croucher. All right, Connor. Let's. All right. So you want to do Thursday night football? Let's talk Thursday night football. Let's talk Thursday night football. Obviously, best wishes to Tua and his yeah, recovery. That was awful. Uh, uh, d- terrible to watch. Uh, quite frankly, 50 times in a row, it felt like we watched it. A lot, a lot of the re- replay. I, I'm just going to say this. I know there's a lot of discussion out there about should he have been playing and and the concussion protocols and did the Dolphins go through the proper steps? Should he have been cleared to play? Should he have cleared to come back on Sunday? Should he have been? I get all. I get all those conversations, and those are really important conversations. And by the way. Mike Florio did a deep dive on that this morning on Pro Football Talk. You go listen to that, find that, profootballtalk.com. That's not our show. That's not our show. No. Our show is about fantasy football and big tables. That's what we do here. And so what I would say here is I just want to focus on two things. Number one is, is that I think I speak collectively for the three of us and everyone that works on the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. That is like prayers for Tua, right? Yes. That looked awful. And we are we – are, we are, most importantly, hoping for that young man's safety and that um, the initial reports were good, that he flew home with a team yeah. and, you know, and so, and has moved in his extremities. So, like, that's all awesome. And we're, again, we are prayers up for Tua. And then the second thing is just fantasy football wise, if the Dolphins are without Tua Tunga Bailoa, um, what does this offense look like under Teddy Bridgewater for however long Tua may or may not be out? That's the biggest thing. Uh, I mean, wh- how big of a change is it? We know they have a mastermind in Mike McDaniel. We know they have arguably one of the most fun wide receiver duos we've seen in a long time. But under center, how much of an impact is there? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. It caps their upside to some extent because Tua, just because he's less proven and less known, has more upside. And he was phenomenal in the first three yeah. weeks. But at the same time, like Teddy Bridgewater is about as good as a backup quarterback That's as right. there is out there. He was solid for Denver, 18 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He also threw the ball 61 yards in the air last night to Tyreek Hill, which is ridiculous. So I think that Tyreek Hill is, at this point, 
basically quarterback agnostic. Tyreek Hill mm-hmm. is just going to deliver, but obviously it caps their upside. Do you agree yeah, with that? I, I do. I, I do. But I think for our purposes, which is, are we still starting Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill? Yes. We are. Yes. I mean, that's the answer. And, and are, is their value going to remain more or less the same? I was encouraged by that big bomb that you mentioned there. By the way, that was a 64-yard completion. It went 61 uh, point four air yards per season, as you see it here on your screen for those watching live on Peacock or on demand as Teddy Bridger goes b- oh, wow. back. And so check down Is that Teddy. Justin Herbert? No, exactly. He chucks it long. It's a little bit of a bobble, but uh, Tyreek Hill comes down with it. Ultimately, that is a 64-yard completion from Bridgewater to Tyreek Hill, and that is the longest completion by air yards this season by any quarterback in the NFL. Not Josh Allen. <laughs> You know, not Aaron Rodgers, uh, not Mahomes. Teddy Bay. Teddy Check B, down Teddy. Check down Teddy has that. So I think that given this offense that McDaniel's going to be like, look, dude, we got a couple of burners here. Like, mm-hmm. you ain't going to be able to just dump it off to Chase Edmonds here. You are going to have to take shots, and that's what they did. So, you know, I, I, I was encouraged by that. He still is Teddy Bridgewater, and, the, you know, he threw the bad pick, and whether that was the wrong route or whether he just he just completely missed Gusecki, we'll see. It um, – Bummed me out because there's a person at this table with two thumbs that had the Dolphins plus three and a half, and it's this guy. (laughs) And so I I was looking good, I felt like, um, uh, while Tua was still in the game. I will say, just just quickly, producer Brian Rubin, he asked me this morning if uh, Skylar Thompson was a dark horse bet for Offensive Rookie of the Year. No, Skylar was Brian Cranston's wife on Breaking Bad, not an Offensive Rookie of the Year. Fan, well done. Uh, Skylar White, by the way, officially the worst character in TV history. That's correct. That you're supposed to root for. That's, that, that's, that's, the, that's key. the caveat. That's the like, key. Because there are guys, like, there, when you think about, like, Game of Thrones, when you think about, like, Ramsey's Bolton, like, you hate Ramsey's yeah. Bolton, but you're supposed to yes. hate Ramsey's Bolton. He's, he's a bad guy. And that's not a spoiler, by the way. Okay. I'm not going to tell you any of the things that Ramsey's does, but you, he's you a can't bad on guy. This show. You can't, right? Ex- fair. <laughs> but um, uh, so, but of all char- of characters you're supposed to root for and like, Walter White's wife in Breaking Bad, one of the top five television series of all time, yes. is my argument for the worst character in TV history <laughs> that you are supposed to like. Okay, that's fair. Right. I, we had a whole thing off air about that, but I think that, uh, I don't know, I think that the fact that she's unlikable makes Walter White more likable, which is part of the game. But anyway. I would lo- I, I wonder if Vince McGilligan has been asked about that. I haven't done the deep dive into Breaking Bad. You know, I've just, I watched the show and it's brilliant and um, it deserves every award and accolade that it got. I just, um, but that's, a, that's an interesting take on it. I'm just, they just, they wrote that character so... Anyway, anyway All right. uh, we're off. Uh, we're off. Steer us back onto the highway <laughs> here. You, Connor, we covered please. the Dolphins wide receivers. Big night for Tyreek Hill. Six of those ten catches were for first downs. Three of them for over yeah. 15 yards. Jalen Waddle, not the same. Tough game. Not worried about it though. I mean, yeah. he's so explosive. He's a talented player. We've seen him. You know, again, this was a this was a short week on the road, and they lose their starting quarterback in a in an awful fashion. And so I I, I don't think there's much you can take away from this game for there. I think there is, if there's one other thing, Connor, that I would take away from this game, it's just that it feels like we have a little bit more of a pecking order now yeah. with the running backs here. Mostert, career highs in offensive snaps and routes run. That's the, He ran 26 routes in this game. He outcarried Trace Edmonds 15-5. to five. He outsnapped him 46-18. It's not even close, that number. No, I, right. I mean, Edmonds gets the touchdown. He could have actually had two because he, he had the bad drop early on. But to me, it feels like at least there's a floor with Edmonds, whereas with, uh, I'm sorry, there's a floor with Mostert. At least there's a floor with Mostert, whereas with Edmonds, you're hoping for those scores. And now he's got three touchdowns in the last two games, so okay. But it feels like, and maybe he gets a little bit more value if Teddy Bridgewater winds up becoming the starting quarterback for the Dolphins for any period of time here. But uh, for me, I feel like Raheem Mostert, based on the usage, got himself into flex play territory now, yep. whereas Edmonds is more shaky. Right. Jay, what do you dream? Think of, yeah, it's the just transition here. Every, every time this guy's healthy, he's an elite talent at running That's back. All key. he does is average five yards per carry. Yeah. Like, he's just a monster. Raheem and also, must start. Yes, he didn't get the touchdown, and it kind of got vultured from him a little bit, even though it was through the, through the air. But he did get two goal line carries at the end, just didn't get it in. He's definitely the guy you want in Miami going forward. Yeah, and the familiarity with Mike McDaniel, once again, we say it every week. Mike McDaniel's job for a long time in San Francisco was orchestrating the run game. And back then, he was leaning on Mostert. Unfortunately, injuries didn't go his way. Now they seem to be going on the right track. Let's move over to the Bengals. Joe Burrow, solid fantasy night, the two touchdowns. It was a slow start for Joe Burrow, but obviously got back on track here. Now back-to-back 
20 plus fantasy point yeah. games after going under 20 the first two. Are you feeling a little better about Burrow after that tough two week stretch? Yeah, sure. I think I think you have to be. We we knew the talent here. And anytime you get a chance to throw to guys like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, um, yeah, I, you feel good about this. 31 pass attempts in what was a pretty low scoring slow paced game but this is what Joe Burrow is he's not going to run a ton and generally speaking but they are going to throw it a bunch especially when you think about how much the run game is struggling yes. here I mean they did everything possible to make Joe Mixon work in this game they gave him they gave him 28 touches in this game massive volume for Joe Mixon and you know like he pays off for you he pays off for you because he gets in the end zone despite you know he should have had multiple I mean like you know they he was how to get he like five, six or seven goal line carries in this one and he only converted the one early in the game but 2.5 yards per rush so far you know and um you know and just and they weren't using him in, he got four targets in the passing game but it was well snuffed out we liked and by we i really mean me but i'm trying to include you in my misery we uh i liked the over on his receiving yards which was 21 and a half and that was a bet that i gave out yesterday he had hit that two of the last three and Dolphins have struggled in, uh, in receiving yards allowed to opposing running backs, but not in this one. Just uh, four receptions, 13 yards. Uh, the under hits, which is not what I bet, so apologies out there uh, for that one. We will do better this weekend on that one. But, you know, I mean, I just, but to me, the struggles of the run game, you know, favor Joe Burrow's passing volume, which he continues to be a, a low end QB1. Why is this team running the ball 30 times last night for Zach 67 Taylor. yards? Yeah. I'm completely out on Zach Taylor in terms of optimizing that passing and yep. that offense. I mean, they were successful throwing it through the air. Burrow, despite getting less pass attempts than he really should have, yeah. still able to put up some good numbers. But, yeah, I would be very concerned because I think deep down in his heart, Zach Taylor, he wants to run the ball for three yards a carry and punt on fourth and one or kick field goals. He's a very conservative coach. I think that's going to limit the absolute top-end ceiling of Burrow and Chase and Higgins, who are all going to be fine because they're superstar talents, but they're just not going to see the volume they should. I, yeah. I, I didn't hear anything you said. You're kind of way down there, but you made a lot of noise. <laughs> the, I saw, I read your mouth, and it, I agree with sort of what I was being able to lip read from way down there um, on, on that. Hig, Higgins and, and Chase are fine. Chase ended up hitting the over on those receiving yards. At the very end, um, he was under on the receptions uh, in terms of that. But, yes, Higgins and Chase are fine. It is a it is a one A one A situation with it. Both those guys are wide receiver ones. Yeah. With that, I mean, I gave out under seventy three and a half yards for Jamar Chase on the show last night. He had eight yards at the half going into the last drive. There's two and a half minutes left, and they're running out the clock, and he's got forty five yards. And then Zach Taylor, the most conservative coach in football, throws a go go route down the left sideline for a thirty five yard bomb. So there is a little bit of um, you know, I've got a thing with Zach Bitterness. Taylor now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad anyway, beats. Bad anyway. beats for the uh, for the boys here. Uh, Anyway, uh, but that's to me, Connor, what uh, what my takeaway and Jay's takeaway is. Yeah, and if you're, hope, if you're hoping for this run game to get going, I think the one number that stood out to me, guys, PFF has Mixon averaging less than a yard before contact. Basically, when he gets the ball, he's hit. Yeah. So that's that speaks more about the situation around him right now than Joe Mixon himself, while I don't really trust this to get that much better for the run game. I, they tried to improve the offensive line in the, in the offseason, and through four games it doesn't appear that they have. They've spent a lot. They've spent a lot more money, but I don't know that they've improved the uh, in, in, in terms of the run game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.